Robert. This is early from Hi-Fi Town. Um, rather than draw out a schematic or give you some instructions uh, by email, I thought I'd make a very quick video on uh, my ideas about how you can utilize these components that you um, are going to purchase. Um, uh, first, I just wanted to cover uh, what's very popular in Asia and traditionally. Um, this is a Moshiograph crossover from the 19, late 19, or I guess mid 1940s. Um, these demand a pretty good price in Asia. They're pretty expensive. You know, they started around 500. They go up to a thousand each. And uh, I just wanted to show you that this is a very unusual one because it is open frame. And it, uh, you can, so you can see all of the components on here. This is what makes up a traditional Butterworth crossover. Um, and um, it's generally what most audiophiles use. And uh, I, you know, they're good depending on which ones you use, and they certainly serve their function, uh, as you'll see. But this, in this case, this is the resistor band here. So this functions as an attenuator for the high frequency. The capacitor operates as a high frequency filter, and then the choke, or the air core in this case, functions as a uh, low pass filter for the woofer. Now, um, just uh, real briefly, uh, my initially n initial ideas were, uh, were to supply you with something. Um, uh, this is traditionally what uh, a lot of audiophiles gravitate towards is an oil capacitor. And I had found I had a bit of a trouble because this is a little bit unorthodox. I, I It's highly recommended, but, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of people are using horns or higher impedance devices. So it was hard to find a capacitor of a high enough value to filter. And this was one that I had selected which is a large oil capacitor with a uh, far too, you know, high voltage rating. And uh, you had to tie three uh, individual capacitors together. And I just decided, I, I lucked into something a little bit better. Uh, we had uh, around here some um, very high quality tantalum glass seal capacitors of a very sufficient uh, audio rating. So these can be used in the same place. These are actually doing the same thing as a large capacitor like this. We're only talking about a voltage rating. So these are rated at about 20 to 30 volts, which is gonna cover actually roughly, depending on how, what your end load is gonna be, these will actually cover up to a 20 to 30 watt amplifier. So I think these are gonna be fine. Now, another problem that uh, you can face, depending on your amplifiers, um, or the amplifier is, is, is uh, load impedance for these, these two drivers here. These are relatively low impedance despite being very old. So uh, 8 ohm, 8 ohm, if we parallel these, we actually get down below 4 ohms. If you don't have a 4 ohm tap on your tube amplifier, that could be a problem. It was a problem for me with this 300B amplifier. So um, very quickly I realized, well, you might need some attenuation as well. So what I found was an L pad here. Uh, this is just a standard audio L pad. I believe these are made in the U.S. They're good quality, um, but you can find all kinds of different ones. So I'm going to go ahead and sell you a couple of those in this order too. So that by combining your capacitor high pass filter, I'm going to include uh, 11 microfarad and 23 microfarad. They both filter different frequencies. I was getting a cutoff or attenuation roll off, we'll say uh, octave, uh, probably 12 dB, something like that. Uh, between five, four to eight hundred cycles on your mid-range high-frequency driver. So um, that was just perfect. I was really surprised. It was just perfect. It sounds really nice. And you don't need to use these at all. You can just go straight, run, run these directly. The Wolfer is directly wired to the amplifier. The mid-range driver is being attenuated and filtered by the capacitors if you choose to use that. The attenuator serves an excellent purpose by creating, making this an eight ohm speaker and that thereby you don't run into any low impedance issues. Now, if you've got a four ohm tap on your amplifier, you're fine. Uh, the four ohm tap will provide um, probably a, a good enough imp uh, load, but you, if you run into distortion or anything like that, or if your amplifier doesn't seem powerful enough, you're, you, you'll probably need to you know, include some kind of resistor or attenuator in the circuit, which basically that's one really good thing crossovers do is they do they do provide the proper load to the amplifier uh, so that you don't run into any distortions or anything like that. Um, if your amplifier has a low tap, 4 ohm tap, you may not need any of this. So so here we go, um, L pad, capacitor. What we're going to do is, 
let me zoom in here so that you can see how this wiring goes. So, I know this wiring looks complicated because it's just makeshift for testing. But we have a uh, positive and negative coming from the amplifier. W to the woofer is direct. The woofer is getting a direct signal from the amplifier, no filters. So, so the the low, there is no low, low pass filtering going on at all. Now for the speaker, we have some high pass filtering. We have the um, positive coming from the amplifier going into this control here. Let me hold this about right here. We have the positive from the amplifier going into here and then coming out on the other side. I'm not actually utilizing the common on this control. It's not being used. I'm just connecting positive and then positive in and positive out, just using this L-pad actually as a basically a potentiometer in this case, but it's, uh, it works well for this particular setup. Now you can wire it different ways and get different results. But so I'm going in and then out to the capacitor, which is in series. So in, out, and then out to your eight inch driver. Now the eight inch driver is on the negative side. Your negative side is straight to the amplifier. So that creates a circuit and you, that way you will be getting um, uh, some filtering going on. So, so here's a quick demonstration. I think it sounds really nice. It's going to sound completely different on the baffle board. So keep that in mind. Your baffle board is going to change the sound dramatically, give you lots more bass. And I still thought, though, that, you know, as, as a quick test, is very good. So, all right, here we go. That's with the high frequency or mid-range disconnected. We're going to reconnect it. I'm in trouble. I see double. Oh, 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 oh. How am I going to get home? That's, that's all the way Black off. Coffee. That's maximum oh, attenuation. Oh, oh, oh. I'm afraid to get home. I had a little too much whoopie so far I meant to take one. My hair's gonna love a love, some stuff hate me, yeah, whoa. I'm so dizzy, please get busy, whoa, heaven me to get home. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside. 
Down by the riverside, I gonna lay down my sword and shield. Down by the riverside, I gonna study war no more. That's with the wolf or disconnected. Now I'm going to take the capacitor out of line so there will be no filtering. This is directly connected to the amplifier. Only attenuation, no high frequency filtering. Ain't gonna study war no more, 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 ain't gonna study.